headquarters of the Commander-in-Chief fleet at Northwood in Middlesex. From this building, the operations of well over 150 ships deployed all over the world and ranging from mine hunters to nuclear-powered submarines are planned and controlled. The primary role of these ships has remained virtually unchanged since the foundation of the Navy in the 9th century. That is, to preserve freedom of movement across the high seas and indeed to protect our interests on them. Now, in order to carry out this vital job, it's clearly essential for the fleet to maintain at all times a high degree of efficiency in readiness for any emergency. The aim of this film is to show you some of the men of the Royal Navy training to carry out a variety of operational tasks. You'll be seeing a destroyer engaging in shore bombardment using her 4.5-inch guns, the destruction of an aircraft by the sea slug medium-range surface-to-air missile, a large group of ships replenishing at sea, the Royal Marines on patrol in Norway and carrying out landings from a commando carrier, and finally, the firing sequence of our ultimate deterrent, Polaris. But first, let's have a look at the basic unit of the fleet, the frigate. The frigate is the smallest unit of the fleet that can be deployed independently, worldwide, to carry out a whole range of tasks. In the anti-submarine role, the frigate can take several courses of action. She can destroy a submarine using the new cruise missile Icara. Alternatively, if she's operating at close range, she can use her mortars. Operating in conjunction with the large multipurpose Sea King helicopter, which is equipped with dipping sonar, the frigate can pinpoint and track down a submarine at a considerable distance. Finally, the frigate can guide her own WASP helicopter, armed with two homing torpedoes, onto a target many miles from the ship. The contact now in a bearing of 320, 9,000 yards, is classified possible submarine, confidence level high. Flight date bridge launched the WASP. The wind is from red 15 at 22 knots. carry out VECTAC procedure. Four six four, this is Delta Alpha. Override. Make your opening heading at three one zero. Stand by for an attack on the submarine now bearing three one five eight thousand yards. Roger, my heading three one zero, ready for attack. Submarine open course to starboard. Submarine course 115. 464, this is Delta Alpha. Stand by to drop two torpedoes. Set submarine depth at 350 feet. Roger, 350 feet set. Torpedoes ready. 464, this is Delta Alpha. You have one mile to run. Check height and speed. This is Delta Alpha. Half a mile to run, left. Heading 300, ready. 
464, this is Delta Alpha, stand by, mark drop, now, now, now. One torpedo away. Torpedo attack area established bearing 317, 7,500 yards. This forenoon, the task force is carrying out a replenishment at sea. The rest of the force has already started and are forming up in line abreast, centred on HMS Fife. We are joining from ahead to carry out a fuel replenishment by the astern method. Therefore, special sea dutyman close up, assume damage control, state three, condition Yankee, replenishment party, and muster on the forecastle. <laughs> Tide spring seven miles, sir. Very good. Increase to 25 knots. Aye, uh, sir. Revolutions 190. Revolutions 190. Special sea duty and close up, sir. Ship is now in damage control, state three, condition Yankee. Now one mile, sir. Very good. Eye of the ship. Port 15, 22 knots. Port 15, revolutions 164. Port 15, revolutions 164. Please turn to port, sir. I'm making an approach now. turbines in boost. About to run up the port outboard gas turbine, remove the port outer SSS clutch gag. You hear this? The replenishment is now complete and the ship is about to carry out a bombardment, operating both 4.5 guns firing salvos. 
We're at present 15 miles from the target and closing. Policy indirect bombardment. Provide high explosive VT fused ammunition. Set range 150. Lookout bearing 180. Four five to two. Set target course two five zero speed two. Request to call for fire. This is Yankee Foxtrot. Request call for fire. Stand by to start the box in two minutes time. Initial bearing one eight zero. Range one five four. Target height one hundred feet. Box started fifteen oh three. Gun target line one eight one. Four fives salvos. Engage. Do you hear that? This is the liaison officer speaking. As you know, the ship is about to start a five-day visit to Auckland. We have already received a large number of invitations from local people and organizations, both to visit private homes and stable families, and to tour around various parts of the country. Details of many of these invitations are displayed on the ship's main notice board. I would, however, especially like to draw your attention to the expedition leaving Auckland tomorrow for Wellington to meet the ship on the 18th. The route passes through some of the most magnificent and spectacular scenery in the world including the famous hot springs at Rotorua. someone to talk to us about the sea slug missile system. Good evening, John. Good evening. Could we start with you telling us how sea slug fits into the weapon systems of the ship as a whole? Yes, the ship, as you know, is fought from the operations room, which is really the nerve center of all the weapon systems in the ship. The central brain, if you like, of this nervous system is a large digital computer fed with target information from radar and sonar sensors. And it then processes this information and feeds it back again to the weapon systems in a usable form. There must be a, a lot of electronic equipment in, involved with all this. Does it present any maintenance problem? It's not a problem. Generally speaking, the equipment is pretty reliable. But, of course, we do carry a large team of maintainers with us to ensure that it remains that way. They work in various workshops and offices all around the ship. The actual missile weighs about two tons and it's about 20 feet long. It is basically an anti-air missile with an anti-ship capability. Could you perhaps explain a bit about the system behind the missile? Yes, certainly. If we start down with the director, this is really a, an aerial system for three different radar sets. The first one actually tracks the target. The second one guides the missile. And the third gathers the missile after it's been fired into the guiding beam, which then takes it straight off to the target. Where are the missiles stay? In magazines, which take quite a large proportion of the, of the ship, so that we can crowd as many in as possible. Some of them are stowed without their wings and fins on, so they have to be virtually reassembled before they can be taken out and fired. In the magazines, there's a system rather like an underground railway, and the missiles are moved very quickly indeed along on trolleys. Perhaps you could finish by telling me what is a, a real anti-aircraft action like? Yes, indeed. Well, if we assume that the enemy aircraft is actually transmitting on his radar, then the whole sequence would probably commence with the electronic warfare director reporting the detection of an incoming enemy aircraft. Enemy aircraft radar, bearing a 040. Enemy aircraft approaching from 040. Sea Slug AARC, 040. Come 40 degrees to port. Engage aircraft track 2222 with Sea Slug. Stand by to engage aircraft target. Launcher, 
Loaded. Target not seen. Widen and search. Ranger ready. 901 acquired. Firing now. Three, two, one. Some 11,000 miles from Sydney, in the north of Norway, a specialist force of Royal Marine Commandos trained for three months each year to live and fight in the Arctic winter. The main task of 4th I Commando as an Arctic ski-trained warfare unit is to support the northern flank of the NATO alliance. Royal Navy's amphibious forces are made up of commando and assault ships, Royal Marine commandos, and their associated helicopter squadrons. The commando ships normally each carry a full commando group with artillery, engineers, and logistic support. Their helicopters provide optimum flexibility for positioning troops ashore. The assault ships carry the command and control facilities and the heavier vehicles, equipment and landing craft necessary to support the units ashore. If the combined efforts of the Alliance fail to maintain the status quo or achieve detente, we in the Royal Navy will continue to deploy the final option in the struggle for peace, Polaris. So much for the ships of today's Navy. What of the future? The new anti-submarine cruiser, HMS Invincible, is now being built by Vickers at Barrow and Furnace. When completed, she'll be about 19,000 tons. She'll carry a squadron of helicopters, and she'll also be capable of operating vertical takeoff aircraft. She's expected to go into service 
in the late 1970s. The first of a new class of frigate, HMS Amazon, is now at sea. She's faster than any other frigate in the fleet, and later ships of this class will carry the new surface-to-surface -surface missile, Exocet. HMS Sheffield is the first of a new class of destroyer. She carries a helicopter and is armed with a new 4.5-inch quick-firing gun and the Sea Dart missile system, which is currently the finest of its type in the world. <laughs> 